I don't know how to put this, but I'm kind of a big deal. All right, this is Saturday, and this is Dr. Bones Live, so that means it's time for another episode of... And now it's time for another episode of Blogger's Corner with Britt. Blogger's Corner, welcome Britt back to the show. How are you, Britt? I'm doing well, how about you? Very well, thank you. Now, this will be our last show for uh, two weeks. We'll resume uh, not next Saturday, but Saturday after, because I will be away on the sunny beaches of Cuba, so... <laughs> t- tomorrow <laughs> actually at this time tomorrow i will be on the beach so <laughs> so Sweet. i am looking very forward to that it's been a long cold winter and i'm looking forward to taking a, a little bit of a break here so um first off what we're gonna do uh is uh since i didn't see earl we're gonna let you carry this one and once you get a chance to watch it since it's been such a busy week uh when i come back we'll rehash and grab up with the with the other one because i'm sure there'll be one next week too which i'll have to catch up on so okay. uh Let's uh, take it from there, and let's move right to Arrow. All right. Well, this week, as we know, they saw from the last episode, Thea was kidnapped by Slade, and he held her captive, and this started Arrow trying to find her, and the whole episode was kind of consumed with that, and we didn't really focus a lot on what with Thea when she was being held. Because we were flashing back to the island and how Sarah tried to um, barter for Oliver's life. And then how basically Slade really was coming apart at the seams, even on the island. His mental deterioration was very evident. And then but the big story was that Roy and Arrow were clashing on how to save Thea. And something happens at the end of the episode. I hope it sticks um, with the Roy. But, but I, I don't know if we'll be seeing him again anytime soon. Hint, hint, hint. <laughs> 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 no, but Sarah, he went uh, crazy. He started beating up Diggle, and then, uh, which was just completely re- unrealistic. And then um, Sarah threatened to blow one arrow through him if he didn't stop. And it really, things just got out of, way out of hand. And Felicity, once again, she did not play a very large part in the episode. So that kind of ticked me off. Well then, uh, I'm see if I can get to that today and maybe have a look at it. <laughs> So that sounds uh, somewhat interesting. <laughs> yes. Just, I, I just can't imagine Sarah threatening to, to put, a, uh, put an arrow through and just, just beating up Diggle. Like, how does that make sense? Like, I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, but all of a sudden he was he was just hulking out. And it was so, it was so ridiculous. Uh, you know, I, I'm not trying to say anything personal, but the actor is just incredibly miscast. So things just continue to be poked holes into in terms of the physicality they allow his character and i know he ate shroom juice or something and has some kind of superpowers but it's just getting ridiculous <laughs> shroom juice okay <laughs> <laughs> well is that, is that is that a nicer way of saying that uh he, he took uh the the quote-unquote magic mushrooms and, and just uh kind of tripping way too heavily thinks he's a hulk guy or <laughs> you could definitely say that <laughs> Okay, well, uh, de- definitely, uh, definitely worth a watch with that. I'm, I'm curious to see uh, how how that panned out. So, and uh, yeah. yeah, it was interesting. There is one revelation at the end with Thea, but once again, it just we kind of predict it was predictable with how it played out. Oh, okay. Well, I'm well, still gonna watch it, but uh, <laughs> kind of makes it a little less interesting that way. <laughs> All right. Well, True. go ahead. No, that was all I was gonna. Okay. <laughs> so, um, uh, like I said, I'll uh, try to catch up on that, and uh, we'll m- move into that when I get back. Um, there's uh, quite a bit of well, not tons, but there's there's a, a fair amount of music news since uh, the inductions to uh, the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame are coming up in a few days. And right now, I mean, this has been I, I've talked about this a few times because it's they've been in and out of the news because of this uh, with Kiss's induction to the Hall of Fame, and they don't want to play because there's too much tension between the team some of the old members and uh <clears throat> the thing is right now is uh paul stanley who's one of the original members who's still in kiss is uh 
almost someone making a statement like Axel Rose did saying like, no, we don't need this to show how good we are, blah, blah, blah. And now he's, he's uh, a little frustrated because the induction uh, uh, will be the original members of KISS and not the new ones because KISS is still going minus uh, Gene Simmons and uh, Peter Chris. Oh, it's not Gene Simmons. Uh, Peter Chris and Ace, uh, Ace Freely. And uh, so he's a, little, he's a little peeved about that. He's like, well, why can't you uh, know, induct the other members as well? And he was citing uh, the, the Grateful Dead who had apparently over 175 members that were... <laughs> were all inducted, and uh, the same thing with Red Chili Peppers. And the Red Chili Peppers did go through uh, a few guitars, not too too many, and a few drummers as well. But they were all inducted. Uh, but one of them I can see why, just because uh, the guitarist was name was Hillel Slovak, and he was the original guitarist. And unfortunately, uh, no uh, rest in peace. He uh, died of a heroin overdose. So that I can see. I mean, he was part of the original member, so inducting him and not inducting him would would not be uh, a good choice. So. Uh, by all means, uh, that he deserves that. Some of the other guys, uh, obviously, there's uh, John Frusciante who was in in and out, and uh, I'm not sure. I have to look this up, but I'm not sure if uh, Dave Navarro got inducted with him just because he was on the one album called uh, uh, One Hot Minute. So there was, a, I believe, two for drummers. It was pretty much almost always uh, Chad Smith, but before him. I believe uh, Jack Irons was in it. I'm not 100% positive of that. I'd have to look that up to be sure. But So that I can see. And I mean, these guys are relatively new. So I can kind of see where Paul Stanley's coming from. But it's like the same time too is, you know what? This is inductions for the original members, not people who can recently join. Because they haven't really made any new music, at least not that I know of. At least nothing that kind of really stands out. So uh, the original members is fine. And even the original even the original members are not in. Uh, Peter Christianis really said, well, you know what? Um, uh, we're not going to show up if you're going to induct these guys or have these guys play uh, with the others because you know this is about us. We're the original members, not these guys. So there's been uh, a bit of a bout, and uh, <clears throat> unfortunately, that's what that's what uh, comes up sometimes with stuff like that, and uh, it's unfortunate. But you know that's that's the way it goes. So uh, the other thing I want to get to though is where is it at? Uh, there's going to be. Uh, the well, it's uh, somewhat of a remake of a uh, uh, Jesus Christ Superstar, and they're uh, going to be uh, well. They'll be signed to a fifty-one uh, city arena tour launching starting June 9th in New Orleans, and uh, the people in it this time will be uh, Johnny Rotten, aka Johnny Lydon from the Sex Pistols, uh, Brendan Boyd, who's the lead singer for Incubus, uh, Instinct's JC. Uh, is it Chazez or Chazez? Chazez, okay, thank you. <laughs> and former Des <laughs> and former Destiny Child singer uh, Michelle Williams, so have all have all signed on for this. So uh, it could potentially have uh, interesting. Uh, um, it could potentially be an interesting show. I'm just not sure how interesting. I mean, this is something I'd like to see maybe a, a clip of before I actually maybe possibly decide to go and see it. Because even though these are kind of a mix of new and old. Uh, uh, um, musicians, it could, it's got it's got potential to be interesting. So I'd like to see how that turns out. And uh, the other thing is uh, Jack White, who's White Stripes, The Dead Weather. I mean, he's done a lot of side projects, and he for record day wants to be the release the speediest uh, album recording uh, and pretty much that's ever been done. So uh, we'll see uh, how all that comes out and. Uh, uh, be interested to see if he gets it done on time. So it's pretty much like, like a, a like two to three day thing. So it'll be super quick. So we'll have to see how that turns out. So that'll definitely be an interesting thing to see. Um, otherwise, there hasn't been too much else that's really been sticking out. And uh, just to jump back with all uh, the new evidence uh, with uh, the Malaysian fight uh, 370, uh, it's pretty much disproving uh, corny love altogether. But there are still a lot of questions that are that are, uh, that haven't been answered, or it's just one of those uh, things. Unfortunately, even though it's a sad tragedy, it's conspiring so many theories, and it's starting to get a little frustrating because, you know, I mean, that's what unfortunately with the social media, you know, anybody's got to say, and there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, obviously with the freedom of speech, but some of the stuff is just getting uh, out of hand and ridiculous. So it's it's one of those things, you know. Just, let the let the experts and professionals handle it, even if we don't just uh, agree with them. You know, uh, in the end, they are the experts and we're not. So, 
Yeah, that is true. I, I was talking to um, my dad the other day, and he told me that there was a flight that had crashed many years ago uh, near South America, and it took them two years to find the flight wreckage. So for me, for us kind of growing up in a CSI culture where we feel like there's going to be immediate results to every tragedy or situation, that instant gratification, you know, I'm saying gratification, but instant, re- you know, solving of the mystery right. is it feels like there's something really wrong happening but in reality something happened before and that kind of helped me feel like okay well maybe things are not moving as slowly as they seem to be well right i mean and with society today we want everything quick and right away and that's completely understandable but there there are just a, a few questions that i mean like I personally have, I'm not going to really go into it, but just uh, some of them don't make sense. I mean, obviously, uh, I, I'm nowhere even close to being an expert for that sort of stuff. And just because I watch a show called Mayday and they have the NTSB uh, I'm trying to solve all these cases like of uh, uh, flights of crash, that sort of thing, I, it doesn't mean I'm, I'm an expert at all in any way, shape, or form. So, <laughs> But uh, my, my only uh, question about this, and like I said, we won't spend a lot of time on this, but is just the fact that now, um, with a plane going down and hitting essentially flat water, it's like glass against brick. So there's got to be pieces, a million one pieces everywhere. And the fact that they haven't found anything, like any little piece yet, is just a little questionable. So. Yeah, that that is. I don't know if the, the, the crash I was talking about in South America, if they had at some point found debris in those two years, but it, it is... It is a little strange. I'll just put it that way. <laughs> oh, right. And I think I think the one your dad was talking about, if I'm correct, was the Air France crash because they and and because uh, there was there was an Air France crash and it did take about two years. So I think that's the one he's talking about. I'm not 100 percent positive, but it's the same one. Then yeah, it is like because it's it's not just the pieces trying to put the pieces together. There there's so much other stuff that will give them more detail. But obviously with the uh, depths of the ocean it's not exactly the easiest place to trawl even with all the equipment we have these days very true i just saw on the news the other day the weather conditions that people are going into to, to find it it's very it's a very harrowing situation so those people are being really brave to try to get the answers you know right so um that's all we're going to say on that because this is something we could spend a long time on and it's not something i want to spend tons of time on so uh We'll go from that, and uh, the one thing today, actually, uh, that I almost forgot, and I can't believe I did, is uh, essentially today, actually, no, I believe it's tomorrow, will be the 20th anniversary of the Kurt Cobain suicide. So, um, a lot of stars are showing their, if you want to say support, you know, by little tributes here and there, and obviously they're saying, like, you know, how much that... Uh, uh, Kurt Cobain and Nirvana did change their lives because let's face it, even if people are not fans, uh, <clears throat> he was uh, a revolutionary when it when it came to grunge. Although he may not have been the best guitar player, the lyrics and everything else uh, just uh, just made him really stand out as an icon and and will forever be an icon because he did uh, change music a great deal and so many people uh, still respect the guy and uh, still like. Uh, set them as an influence because they are because i mean that trio alone is just did so much for the music business as as did the beatles and you know some other older bands you know there's every if you're lucky like every 20 years or so maybe 30 years you get someone that's going to completely revolutionize the style of music or just the, the change as far as like uh uh music style and lyrics and that sort of thing you know and so although uh like i said although kirk Bain wasn't the best guitarist in the world you know, like he's comparable uh, and has been compared to uh, John Lennon and Paul McCartney as far as writing styles, just because even though his weren't all kind of happy and poppy, I mean, they did, did have a lot of depth and mean to them and they did so much and uh, it's it's unbelievable and uh, it, it's, it's hard to believe it's been 20 years since it's happened. I mean, like, I remember, I remember when the news first broke. I mean, I was in high school when this happened, so... So it's unbelievable to think it's been 20 years. I mean, I know I'm dating myself, but uh, I was in high school when uh, the the news broke the wire. Because when I first heard it, just like a lot of people are like, no, no, it's got to be a rumor. Then every other news station's like, holy crap, like what happened? Yeah, I have a vague recollection of it. I was, um, I'm dating myself. I was younger at the time. And I don't know where I'm at. Um, people talked about it. I 
didn't really grow to understand his influence and just how much of an impact he had until I got older. And hearing, um, obviously, Teen Spirit um, and thinking what an amazing song that was and knowing that he was gone, it, it was a, it's a very tragic. And I heard someone this week say that he would have been 47 years old if he were still alive today. That's I think right. that's right. Yeah, because uh, he... Uh... Just like a lot of the, we'll call, uh, we'll say that the greats uh, were uh, mostly OD'd and dead at 27, so. Oof, it's, it's really sad. It's yeah. really sad when someone, you know, just so much more he could have done. Well, that's right, and those are one of those bands, I remember when it first happened, that uh, obviously all, all including myself, were people upset about it. It's like, this kind of sucks because this is kind of one band that kind of wanted to kind of quote, quote, grow old with and see where they're going to move to, right? So, <clears throat> But then, you know, if, if they had, if they continue on, who knows if uh, Dave Grohl will, will, would have done all the stuff he's doing now and has done. So, you know, it's, it's, one, of those th- it's one of those things. It's like, you know, I wonder if it's kind of fun to think about, like, what would happen if the table had turned the other way. That is a very interesting thing to, to contemplate and think about. I, I don't know. I, I think he would have done obviously a lot more things i don't know it, it kind of reminds me of with the beach boys and brian wilson and he battled a really bad uh, addiction and he ended up making it um for the other side and so we got to see him what he would have done and um it's very interesting obviously he didn't people remember the beatles more because there's so much tragedy associated with that well group, that's re- but the beach boys have a legacy too well, that's right, and that's the thing is like uh, the Beach Boys are uh, are still pretty big, but it's one of those bands that uh, not too many the focus is more uh, uh, on the on the Brit rock than it is on on the U.S. side of things as far as bands go. Because you're right, because there's there's a lot in depth of Beach Boys. I mean, you've ever seen a documentary on them like behind the scenes? It's like it's uh, <clears throat> it's pretty it's pretty incredible like what they went through and. How they started, how they got together and started playing, and you know, and just there was there was a lot of problems. Even though the music was good, there was a lot of problems that people didn't know about and didn't see. <clears throat> yeah, it's very true. I went to see their concert uh, when they were doing a reunion tour with Brian Wilson. Uh, I, I guess it was two years ago, and it was really amazing. And they paid tribute to uh, the fallen members of the the band, and just to see how much emotion and how much they really went through. And to make it to so be playing music, it was it was really awe inspiring. Well, you know, there's one album because I think we talked about this a while back. We talked about the guilty pleasures and as far as music goes, and uh, the this is it's all honestly it's probably about, <laughs> uh, about 15 years ago, maybe a little bit more than that. Uh, I remember uh, I, my dad and I were uh, were in the car going somewhere, and. Uh, uh, he uh, was talking about because he heard uh, he was listening to uh, a show on. Uh... Oh, we lost Brit. Oh gosh, so we'll, we'll wait and uh, try to get her back here, and I'll continue that story. I'm not sure what happened because recently seen having just a few issues with that, so we'll have her back in a few minutes. Brit, you there? I'm here. Okay, great. Okay, I'm not sure what happened there, but we're back. Ray roll again here, so. We were traveling in the car, and he'd mentioned he'd heard a song on uh, CBC, which is a Canadian broadcasting company, and they do, like, uh, Canadian radio, television, that sort of thing. And uh, he, uh, one of the shows he listened to, they're talking about Guilty Pleasures, and he said, no, I really thought about it, because I went out and got this. And it's a double C, it's kind of almost like a best of Beach Boys called Pets. And oh. and it's, it's like, this is my Guilty Pleasure, because my dad never really talked too much about the Beach Boys, because he was more into the Beatles and that sort of thing, so... We never heard too much about it, and then he's like, "Well, you know," and it's it's such a such a great album. I mean, like, Pets. If you're gonna get any Beach Boys album, that is the one to get for sure. Very very cool. So yeah, that's uh, there was a there was a guilty pleasure right there, but it, it is worth it, and they they are uh, they are a good band, and of course, you know, their their songs. You know, as soon as you hear like the first few chords, you know it's them right away. And and most of the, most of the songs, just like a lot of the other old tunes from there, you remember all the words. And even if you don't, you know they come back to you as soon as you start hearing it, even though you haven't heard it in let's say like like four or five months. Yeah, that that is very true. And I think that having the Beatles push, if they didn't have the Beatles, I don't think they would have. They they got pushed, and that I don't want to say rivalry, but I guess you could say that kind of pushed them to be the best that they could be. Well, exactly, and there's obviously there's a lot of uh, music rivalry just in general, 
And uh, that one uh, in specific is more uh, kind of, we'll call it groundbreaking than some of the other ones. Some of the other ones are just like, they're there, but they're not hugely, not real huge, real big. I mean, uh, so some that people may know, some people may not know just because of the genre of music and uh, kind of what happened. And actually, I talked about this very briefly uh, the other day on uh, one of the shows. Uh, I believe it actually was with uh, Steph from the Dead Sea Navigators. Uh, it might have been someone else. But point being is that uh, uh, two bands who'd always kind of rival each other. And one, actually, the singer from one of the bands used to be in, in this band. Not one of my favorites now, but uh, Metallica. A guy named Dave Mustaine used to be in the band when they first, first started. And then he was booted out and he started his own band called Megadeth. And for years, they were rivaling against each other. And finally, <clears throat> um, even though they're even though the, the album is, I, I think it's amazing, it's called Countdown to Extinction, that was uh, put out not too uh, long before the Metallica's Black album was put out. And uh, we lost her again, I'm not sure what's going on here, so let's just try this one more time. There we go, hey Brett. You back? All right, let's get something screwy that's going on here let's try this one more time and try getting her back so i'm not sure what's going on here but uh hopefully this will work this time you there Britt? can you hear me Britt? okay well i tell you what we'll try to get her back here in a few seconds here and uh since i am going to cuba uh tomorrow morning I'm going to play a song by the Dead Sea Navigators called Your Man from Havana. So dig this.
All right, that was Dead Sea Navigators with your man from Havana since I'm going to Cuba and we do have Britt back. I apologize for the little uh, technical issues we had, but just get back what we were talking about, Britt. Um, like I said, uh, the Black Album by Metallica came out uh, not too long after Countdown to Extinction and unfortunately blew them out of the water and uh, kind of uh, put a big hamper and a bit of a, uh, we'll call it a, a, a depression on Dave Mustaine just because they'd worked so hard in this album. I figured, no, finally we're going to have the number one album, and unfortunately not. And my personal feeling is I, I love Countdown to Extinction, and I've said this before, I think the Black Album, in my eyes, is was just, uh, you know, look, here we are uh, mainstream now, and this album's a bunch of crap. So, <laughs> <laughs> But that, that, that's just my personal opinion, so doesn't mean that uh, it's what everybody else's opinion is, but that's my personal opinion. So, uh, what's now, since we've covered all that, let's get into your uh, blogs of the week and blogs you're going to be working on. Okay, this week I did a review of American Hustle. Have you seen that movie? It's on the sea. Uh, I want to see it, but I have not seen it yet. But I just, it looks really good. I just haven't had a chance to go and see it yet, unfortunately. All right, well, I went in, like you, anticipating, having heard all the buzz, that this is going to be an amazing movie and a great <laughs> cast with the exception of Bradley Cooper. And, yeah, it was awful. Really? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was one of the worst movies of 2013. Incoherent, um, nothing happened. All of a sudden, weird things would happen that were never explained. Characters just screaming in, in bathroom stalls and listening to disco music and nothing was explained i understand that here's one of the things was that a lot of the film was ad-libbed and sometimes that can be a really good thing but i it really felt like there was no coherent script that they were actually working from and david o russell who directed it who also directed silver linings playbook for me the best movies ever made was three kings and I have not seen him make another movie that even comes close to that. Did you see Silver Pines play? No, oh. I can't say that I have, unfortunately. All right, well, it, that movie, too, for me, was overrated. And so I went in thinking he would redeem himself, and this movie was not it. <laughs> 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 and one of the most embarrassing... Christian Bale, who is an amazing actor, he makes this full, once again, a really big physical transformation with a, hint, with a you know, comb over and everything. And then Bradley Cooper comes in with having put curlers in his hair, and he really, I could tell, he really thought he was blowing it away with this movie. Was and he was, that, he was probably, he for me was impressed. I was not. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, I, oh, and another thing, there's a scene in the movie I feel like I feel like when I watch a movie, there we only have about two hours, so let's get to it. And this movie just waits and waits. It ever since spending, it felt like five minutes with a scene with Amy Adams and Christian Bale inside of a dry uh, dry cleaner and have the the um, clothes going all around them, and they're kind of looking at each other. And I'm thinking, okay, they're falling in love. We get that they're falling in love, <laughs> but I. It, I just was, it was really horrible. And maybe it's because I had such high expectations, but it was a, very disappointing for me. So, in other words, it was probably something like this when you after you watched it. What the hell was that? <laughs> 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 that, that sums it up perfectly. <laughs> <laughs> is an Irish movie it's from Ireland and it is a not it's a romantic comedy I guess but it is so much better than any romantic comedy I've seen in a very long time uh, these basically this guy is a author he, he loves food and he likes women and so he brings the two of his great passions together to basically use food as a metaphor for relationships and life and he becomes a very successful author and that all changes what well, his success doesn't change but he was kind of a womanizer and then he becomes a one woman man when he meets a free-spirited kind of hippie a play by leonor watling this is a really good movie um, it was so good it was very funny and 
One of the things I liked about it was that it kind of, I know romantic comedies, also known as chick flicks, but (laughs) (laughs) for me, I don't know what to call a male, I don't know what they call male flicks, but um, anyway, I'll I'll think about that later. I I have something that comes to mind, but it's not appropriate. And um, (laughs) um, and so basically it's kind of offered a male perspective and I felt like he was really fleshed out well and it hearing that male perspective about what annoys him in a relationship, it was very equally balanced. So I really did enjoy it. Unfortunately, the third act, the ending was very similar to the ending of another romantic comedy. So I, I thought it was really great until then. If I had not seen that other movie, it would have been amazing. But because of that, because I'd already seen the same ending, it kind of put me out a little bit. <laughs> oh, fair enough. Yeah, you know what? I don't, I don't know necessarily what to call uh, uh, a guy, a guy movie. To be honest with you, I mean, like, I mean, I can uh, think of a bunch of uh, like adjectives to describe them, but I can't think of an actual name. That's a good one to think about. Maybe muscle movies. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, like, because uh, like yeah, possibly. You I mean because like usually it's the the action kind of bang bang shoot them up right and watch things blow up. But uh, <clears throat> I don't know. That's a good one. That's actually the one uh, we should think about. Maybe coin a phrase to it, eh? Like. Yeah, I, I, man, I, that is a good point. I, I'm just trying to, what would testosterone? I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm thinking there's nothing that describes movies that starts with a T, I don't think. I, I don't know. That is really a good one. I might have to send out a tweet and ask for suggestions. <laughs> yeah. No, that, that'd be, actually, that'd be interesting. So, actually, you know, let's get that ball rolling right now. So, anyone who's listening right now, uh, uh, it's a good question. Uh, what would your thoughts be on, uh, on on a guy's movie? Like, how would you define that? Obviously, we know, we know uh, the quote unquote chick flicks because uh, for the most part, even even though most of us have seen a few and most likely fallen asleep during them, but <laughs> they, they 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 seem for the most part to come along the same uh, storyline, which a lot of the other guys' movies do as well. Whether they're uh, you know uh, based on uh, uh, old gangsters like The Godfather, like classics right there, or something like uh, die hard where things blown up and you know the yippee ki you know what you know how the rest of that goes so. <laughs> <laughs> and that sort of thing so i'd be i'd be curious so if anybody has any any ideas of uh what to, what to call them uh why don't we try to get that ball rolling and either tweet brett or i can tweet her at eclectic pop you can tweet me at drc bones let me know what your thoughts are and we'll see if we can't get a a, a new uh a new thing a new uh, and we'll coin a new phrase here so Let's get the ball rolling. So if anybody's got ideas, by all means, uh, start tweeting them. We want to hear them. We we'll want to see what you got because uh, at this point, it's uh, <clears throat> it's kind of hard to think about because I haven't really thought about this ever before. You know, like, and uh, just one of those things that there might be some combinations, but it probably wouldn't be uh, too good to say on the air or even tweet. So <laughs> rather <laughs> rather than go down that path, we'll uh, try to keep them uh, somewhat somewhat clean uh, that they can. Uh, be uh i guess portrayed uh, uh i'm not sure well is a word but something that's uh we'll, we'll call it somewhat politically correct i mean we don't have to go uh down the path where it's got to be prim and proper but uh i'd be curious to see what uh, people come up with i would be too i have an idea but i'll we'll wait for after um off the air to share it just to see sure <laughs> But um, yeah, that is very good. Yes, please, please do tweet. And that that was a really that is a really good topic. Yeah. I'm really curious to see what people come up with. I'm glad you brought um, that up because I wouldn't have thought about that. So, yay! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. The, the rest of the logs, I, I did another review. Some girls, Adam Brody from the OC. He's a um, unrepentant womanizer who claims he wants to reconcile with his bevy of exes in an attempt to reconcile so that he can get married with a clean conscience. This movie is painfully boring. <laughs> painfully boring. It's based off the Neil LaBoot, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, Neil LaBoot play. And it is just incredibly stagnant, claustrophobic. The women are portrayed as being pretty intelligent. Why they would fall for a swarmy hipster douche, I have no idea. But who else this has happened? <laughs> I just keep waiting. I only stayed with it because I was thinking something horrible is going to happen to this guy. Just something, a really good comeuppance. One of these women is just going to really show him. 
Yeah, that never happened. The <laughs> last laugh is by him on us for spending an hour and a half watching this movie. Oh, wow. <laughs> you know, I... <laughs> and, yeah. Go ahead. Oh, no, that was it. <clears throat> I was going to say, there's uh, some we've talked about uh, before that... But I haven't, I haven't seen too, too much lately, so I can't say there's a, a specific movie that I kind of watch, like, oh, come on, get to the point already, you know? <laughs> Oh, I know. And I just watched a movie. I'll be putting a review up for it later. It's called The Lifeguard, which also stars Kristen Bell, who um, stars in Some Girls, and most people, Veronica Mars uh, was right. her big character. Um, and now I guess Frozen. But anyway, um, <laughs> it, that movie, The Lifeguard, I thought it was going to be a little fun coming-of-age story for adults. No, it is a bunch of adults whining about their life when absolutely nothing is particularly wrong with it except for they have way too much time on their hands <laughs> oh i i can i can definitely see that so uh that's usually what happens you know the more time you have the more time there's a talk about thing about stuff that's like maybe uh not necessary or is just something you're kind of just wasting your time on just because there's nothing else to do so i can definitely see that um with your boss coming out this week um i'm not going to be here but obviously the uh, premiere, is it uh, the second season of Game of Thrones is on Sunday? Yes, it is. So, oh, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> you're going to summon your voice for that one, so I'm assuming that uh, you're going to be uh, uh, hopefully uh, be doing reviews or just like uh, weekly kind of summaries of the shows? Yes, I'll definitely be covering that in the TV highlights, which we're doing uh, this, have a new one up today. Uh, but yes, it will definitely be covered. It's one of my favorite uh, shows. Um, I'm very excited about being back. It's so sad because it only comes on once a year for 10 episodes, and I'm going through this with Bates Motel, too, where we've already burned through, I think, uh, half of the season, and it's, I wish it came on more than once a year because it is a lot to wait so that you can, you know, have ten only 10 episodes. Oh, that's right. I mean, like I said, I haven't watched it too, too much, but I'll try to keep on top of it so I can at least uh, chat with you a little bit about it. But uh, there's one thing, and I can't remember if I brought up last week, but did I bring up, uh, it had to do with Game of Thrones, did I bring up uh, that uh, article about uh, the, the students in the class in, uh, in Belgium? No, I don't think you did. Okay, cool. Uh, this this was actually really very cool, and such a smart idea, and uh, really good on the teacher uh, to pull something like this. It was, uh, so this is this is out of, uh, out of Belgium, and uh, there's a... Pretty much, it's the article is called "Spoiled Rotten Kids." So it says some rowdy students were stunned into silence after their math teacher threatened them with Game of Thrones spoilers. The fed up teacher, <laughs> the fed up teacher asked students at the Belgian school who watched the fantasy show and almost uh, and most said they did. And this, and this uh, even says was he or she, but uh, the teacher said, "I've read all the books, and from now on, when there's too much noise, goes I will write the name of the next death." The teacher said, silencing the room. Whoa, that so, is very inventive. So that was awesome. This uh, a good on good on him or her for doing that, just because uh, you know that's that's a good way, and it's it's perfect because so many shows now these people uh, like students and everything are so uh, tied to these things. So what what a better way to to get them to be quiet and uh, want to actually pay attention is you know threatened with uh, releasing a spoiler like that because if you're a huge fan, you don't want to know. You want to wait till the show to see what happens. Exactly. I know. Um, my dad read the books, and I have to constantly say, Dad, Dad, <laughs> I didn't know that that person died, okay? I didn't want to know yet. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, it was. Uh, I just thought I'd bring that up since we were talking about Game of Thrones because of that, and it's, that's very smart, absolutely brilliant. So, And it worked, so... Very cool. Yeah, it it is a it was a really good show. I see why the kids are all into it uh, these days. But it is very... Um, it's very gritty, it's very dark, and I. but it's so cinematic and so rich and so many great characters, and uh, obviously my favorite is Tyrion. I think he is a genius. <laughs> 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 so I'm excited to catch up, but my dad's warned me that it's going to be a, it's gonna be a very bad season for Tyrion, so I'm a little hesitant, but I'm excited to follow him through this next leg of the journey. Well, you know, I'm curious to see uh, some of the some of the YouTube highlights just because uh, last season when it ended, obviously there was a couple of main characters killed off, and uh, there was a, there's a YouTube video and uh, of a bunch of people the reactions, and it's so funny. It just makes you crack up because just the reaction, like, oh my god, oh what the, you know, <laughs> like, and it's it's probably about two minutes of like about fifty different people like their reactions, and it's pretty funny to watch. So. 
Yeah, I, I tell you, after last season and the Red Wedding, I literally, and you know me, I'm not often left speechless, but I really was without my words. I kind of was like, huh. I had to really take a, a second because it was so uh, shocking and disturbing and like, where do you, where do we go from here? I, I just love the author and oh, George R. R. Martin because he, just when you think that you may know what's happening, he's shaking it all up and going in a completely different direction. Well, you know what, like I said, I'll, uh, like I said, I know a little bit about it and I'll try to keep up so I'll be able to chat with you about it. Um, but just thinking of funny moments, you do funny moments on TV, this was uh, more or less a funny moment at work. Um, <clears throat> on the Canadian channel, on one of the Canadian channels, there's a show called Border Security and it's got to do with the CBSA, so Customs Canada, just stuff they intercept and travelers coming through the border. And it's all got to do with uh, pretty much the, the British Columbia Seattle border and yeah. a few at the Toronto Pearson uh, Airport border. So, no, they find a lot of stuff, and uh, most of the times, uh, uh, well, not most times, sometimes uh, they're testing the bodies, and they're testing for drugs, and that's no secret at all. So, uh, this week, uh, when I was working, as people know, I work airport security, and I'm, all, all I'm going to say is we test for certain things, I'm not going to say what, but the funny thing was, is uh, uh, the, one, uh, the one couple I was uh, testing their bags, uh, the, the wife asked, uh, asked the husband, and she goes, well, what are they testing for? Talking to him. And he goes, oh, they're testing for drugs. Don't you watch Border Security? And I started cracking up. I was like, you know what? I'm not even bother correcting that because this is too funny. <laughs> so th there, there you go with uh, people's uh, conceptions of what actually goes on, even though it's a completely different entity than what airport security is. So it was pretty funny, and I had a good laugh about that. So uh, they, they, they made the day for me in that one. I thought it was pretty funny. That is hilarious. And it's so interesting how people sing these shows and how, you know, it affects what you think is the reality. And it is really, um, it is really amazing to know the difference and see it too. Well, and that's exactly it. And I'm not sure if it's still on. Oh, I know there's one uh, show called uh, Miami 24-7 and it's about the Miami International Airport. And they, there's a whole bunch of stuff, no tied into it. So they go with the, with the TSA and know the customs on site stuff they found that sort of thing so <clears throat> for the most part i mean a lot of it's already divulged people know but i just rather not get into it but uh but it was pretty funny when i heard that i was like you know what that made my week it's like you know what you you if that's what you want to be comfortable with then absolutely you stay with that because i'm not going to crush you because that was funny so cool of you but uh other than that um we're just about out of time we still got a few minutes left here um, if there's anything, any other uh, blogs you've been working on or are going to be working on coming up that we should know about? Uh, yeah, I, I'm going to publish after the show uh, the whole guide to April's new movie releases, what's worth seeing, what's, you know, I didn't say what's not, I'm trying not to be negative, but anyway, <laughs> <laughs> that, and I saw the movie Bad Words yesterday with Jason Bateman. Oh yeah, how'd that yeah, go? Yeah, it was really, really funny, the kid in the movie is what makes it, he is so cute and Jason Bateman is a really mean, awful character, <laughs> so <laughs> you hate he's being mean to this little boy, but the, the kid just makes the movie. It was really funny. I was surprised. There were um, some elderly people in the audience, though, and this is not it is a kind of a more, shall we say, uh, progressive film in terms of its you know, sexual dialogue and whatnot, so I felt a little uncomfortable for them, and the old lady, after she was done, she's like, Get me out of here. <laughs> <laughs> so she didn't enjoy it as much as I did, but I thought it was great. <laughs> well, that's the thing is nowadays, you know, the, the movies are pushing more and more envelopes just because essentially everybody's come desensitized to all this stuff. So it doesn't really like kind of shock and wow anybody anymore, right? So, and that I can see, you know, I can, the, we'll call it the uh, elderly generation are more set in their ways and that's not a slight against them, but that's, uh, for the most part, that's a reality. So uh, I, 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 can, I can see that, but so... I mean, let me tell you, I got one very, very quick story. Uh, years ago, it was probably about eight or nine, and uh, there was a movie called The Fish Called Wanna with John Cleese, Jimmy Lee Curtis, uh, um, Kevin Klein, and a uh, really funny movie, but uh, the title really duped my grandparents because they weren't expecting when we saw that movie, <laughs> and neither were we, so they were, they were a little put back by that. So. <laughs> so. Did they ask if you wanted to leave the theater? Uh, no, this kind of sat there, just didn't say much <laughs> until the movie was done. So <laughs> there you go. Yeah, 
I thought the old people, would, when it happened, the elderly, I thought, oh my God, are these, because they didn't laugh once, and I'm sitting there, you know, busting up laughing, and the only thing that she spoke was, you know, get me out of here when, when the movie ended. <laughs> All right, well, that is going to be all the time we have for today. But, uh, Britt, it's always a pleasure having you on for Blogger's Corner. Thanks for having me. And we'll talk to you guys again in about two weeks. We'll have a lot to catch up on. And, obviously, I'm probably going to talk a little bit about the trip because how am I not going to, right? So, <laughs> so <laughs> yeah. until uh, next uh, – well, two Saturdays from now, we'll catch you then for Blogger's Corner. Until then, bones out, and thanks for listening. <laughs>